information to the court. And when they did that, the information then became public. So the city tried to sue these guys from releasing information, but then the information got released anyway. Um, so, you know, boo to the MBTA and yay for the hackers. Um, and then the case got dropped and all the information got out there and the kids got, got off. But it was, you know, in the United States especially, the legal system is always used first. You know, it's like you sue first, ask questions later. Um, and that makes a lot of computer security research very, very nervous. Um, you know, for, for the, for the, talk, for the um, next few slides I'm going to talk about, um, I pretty much thought I was going to get sued as soon as I released the information. And that's a bad thing, right? We don't want to have that in our community. It's better to be able to release information and help people and go about it not having to worry about all the legal stuff, right? Just worry about the technical information to, to get people um, to learn. So smart parking meters. There's just a lot of applications out there. Uh, I can't even list them all, but those are, those are some of the core. Um, the, the smart parking meters, uh, I'm going to talk about this. I wanted to talk about a bunch of different details of, of hardware hacks, but I realized that I could stand up here for, for days and, and you guys probably wouldn't want that. So um, cut it down to, to one hour and my favorite hardware hack, uh, which happens to be the parking meters, mostly because um, I was involved in it and it just happened recently, so it's still cool, but also because it covers all sorts of different aspects of hardware hacking. It's not just looking at a circuit board and changing something. There's all different aspects that I, that, that I covered in, in the process. So tearing down, analyzing, um, figuring out attack vectors and then emulating protocols, all these different things. So even if, even if you only want to focus on one part of hardware hacking, you know, your friend might be good at something else. Then you can start teaming up and taking advantage of all your skills. So parking meters, um, the parking industry, the fare collection in industry generates $28 billion annually in the world. Billion. That's a lot of money. Um, and parking is one of those things that you don't normally think about, right? If you drive, you go, you pay your money and you walk away. You don't think about all the financial problems necessarily, or uh, social implications. If the meters are, 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 are broken in a security fashion in some way that you could say remove the value and, uh, and cause somebody to get a ticket. Um, uh, or uh, legal applications as far as, you know, th these devices are now computers. So they're not a mechanical device that's very indisputable. There's a computer, it's questionable if, you know, did it actually run out of time? at the right time. So questions that you might be able to then go fight in, in the traffic court about. Um, so this work I, I'd done with uh, Jake Applebaum and Chris Tarnovsky. To look at San Francisco, there's a, a lot more of, of details um, on the website, uh, but this is sort of the core of what we did. Um, in the early days, park commuters were all mechanical, and uh, now, at least in the US, has finally caught on. Um, starting to move from mechanical meters to smart meters. And these smart meters are just electronic systems running firmware, there's a display. Um, but everywhere else in the world um, ha had started doing this a long time ago. Parking meters, um, user interfaces, there's the coin slot, right, if you want to pay with a coin, um, which some meters don't even have anymore. Now you have smart card interfaces, you pay with a smart card, you pay with a credit card, which is something that a lot of uh, a lot of cities in the United States are starting to do. And there's a whole slew of problems with doing that as opposed to using smart cards. But I won't get into that now. Um, some of the administrator interfaces that a legitimate traffic enforcement officer would use are the same as the user interfaces. The coin slot, the smart card. Um, so the same slot that you use to insert your smart card and pay for money, uh, an administrator, especially uh, the meters that we looked at in San Francisco, can insert a different smart card and communicate with the system that way. Um, infrared, the coin slot had an RF, uh, um, had, uh, had a coil around it so you can actually communicate through some inductive coupling with a special reader. All sorts of, all sorts of stuff. Newer, newer devices have wireless, GPRS, connecting to a cell phone network. So now you have these parking meters on a network. And you know, I, I talk about meters here, but think about it with whatever product you're, you're looking at or whatever product you want to look at. These are just kind of, this is just like general um, guidelines. But there's just all sorts of stuff you can take advantage of. Any single entry point or any sin single interface on a product is, a, is an avenue of attack. So if we're looking, you know, I read a bunch of data sheets on the parking meter and I saw, okay, there's a card, there's a coin slot, smart card, inter infrared wireless. Each one of those could potentially have vulnerabilities that we could take advantage of. I mean, the possibilities are just endless, it's mind blowing. 
So we decided to just look at one interface, which was the smart card interface, primarily because I'd never really done work with smart cards. So I said, okay, this is going to be a good excuse to buy some tools and start experimenting with it. Uh, but we weren't the first to look at parking meters. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly building on, on previous work, just like we are in, in the computer security industry anywhere. We're constantly building on, on previous work. Um, New York City, uh, New York being, being the place where if there's a con, somebody will figure it out to make money. Uh, and they had electronic parking meters come out in 2001, and somebody found out pretty quickly they used infrared for the, for the audit for the audit logs, for the administrator to pull down audit logs, the usage of each parking meter. Somebody figured out if they had a universal remote control set to a certain IR frequency, a certain channel or a certain button, um, they could reset the value on the meter. So say you park your car, you pay your $5 for parking, you walk away, you think you're fine, and then you know, some guy that doesn't like you walks up, removes the value, meter maid comes by and gives them a ticket. So you know, the person thought they were fine, and now they have a $50 ticket waiting for them when they come back. That's sort of a social implication. Um, San Diego had a stored value smart card that Hikari looked at in 2004, uh, a different stored value implementation than what we look at. But it's just all of these things just shouldn't have happened. But they do. You know, it's, it's 2009, almost 2010, and some of these problems have been around longer than we have. Um, Chicago had a bunch of multi-space meters recently deployed. And these are meters that, that, that are common in Malaysia that I saw, is you have one meter that corresponds to an entire block, for example. And you go to the meter, you pay money, you get a little ticket, you put it on your dashboard. So you don't have discrete parking spots, you just have, if you park, you, you pay your money in a meter and you put, the, put a little sticker on your, on your thing, as opposed to paying per, per spot, having a meter per spot. Um, as soon as these things were deployed in June, the, uh, uh, there was some, some firmware problem or something going on where in a certain region of the city, the, the meter stopped working. And, and the media, of course, was like, hackers did this. Hackers are coming down on us. They're taking over the world. Um, and uh, I, I think it was a bug in the system that wasn't tested. But it was interesting because it could have been some sort of social disobedience, some sort of hacker attack. Because people were really pissed off that Chicago implemented this new meter. They raised the rates. So there are possibilities, and, and there are still possibilities in that meter system um, to, to take it over. Um, a lot of other smart card hacking has been done. So again, we're building on previous work. Uh, the Dutch phone cards that were, that were talked about in HackTick, and Rob is here somewhere who had a hand in that. Um, FedEx, Kinko, Satellite TV is, is a really well-known one. So you know, we're not talking about anything new, and we're not talking about anything groundbreaking. And that's, you know, if you're going to take, take home anything from this presentation, it's you know, hardware hacking. It's not always this you know, high tech, brand new, you have to do something new. It, it's just taking advantage of, of, of problems that have been there for a really long time. And people, you know, companies need to learn that. You need to kick them and say, look, you shouldn't be doing this. You've got to make products more secure. Um, so San Francisco paid $35 million to deploy this new smart parking meter system. And that's a lot of money to, to solve a very small problem relatively. Um, they were trying to deal a lot with fraud of meter maids going by and opening the meters and skimming money as they're, as they're uh, um, cleaning out the meters. So San Francisco said, okay, well, if we put in electronic meters that can do electronic logging and keep track of everything, then, um, then people aren't going to be able to steal anything. Uh, but they paid $35 million to fix a, I think it was like a, a $1.7 or a $7 million problem, a very small portion of money relative to the amount of money that they spent. Um, they use a McKay Guardian meter, and there's a, a stored value smart card that has either a $20 or $50 value that you pay in cash, you go and buy somewhere um, at the store. So I was able to break this system in three days, um, looking only at the oscilloscope captures of the smart card communication. So I didn't need to know about what was going on inside the parking meter. All I had to do is go up to a parking meter um, with an oscilloscope in the middle of the street. In San Francisco, it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you want stick a smart card shim in there, stick a smart card in, monitor the communications, go back home, analyze everything, and then go and try my attack. But what we did do anyway is buy a parking meter off eBay, the early version, the McKay Guardian, instead of the XLE, just an earlier version, just to get some ideas about what's possible. And they're sort of fun, you know, part of the, part of the whole teardown. So we open it up, realize there is an ASIC, an application-specific IC, that has a Z80 microprocessor. So a very general purpose processor type that's been around for a long time. The, uh, um, the program code is stored on an external uh, um, 
flash device, so it's easy to, to remove. It's the, the one on the left. Um, easy to remove, stick in a, a general purpose device programmer, read the code right out. And then knowing it's Z80, you could toss it into some Z80 dissembler and, uh, and get an idea of what's going on. Uh, the device was modular, which was interesting, so you could take apart different parts, the, the coin slot, the, uh, the smart card interface. Um, then you see some infrared functionality in the upper left. There's this big, huge RJ45 connector that was some sort of debug interface. So we didn't have to take advantage of that, but knowing that, saying, okay, if we had access to the hardware, maybe we could use this debug interface. Uh, but what we did try to do is um, hook it up. I was trying to monitor the, the communications of that debug interface, hoping that maybe it would give me some clues how to access an administrator menu in the newer version. Um, I didn't actually have any luck, um, but when the meter was turned on, on power up, it would send some information out of the infrared port and some information out of the RJ45 port. So it was some debug port, which was interesting. And that's something when you're looking at hardware, you gotta think about that. Look, at, look for hidden test points, look under a battery, peel back a sticker, see if there's any, uh, any pins accessible from the outside world that aren't intended for you, but probably intended for an engineer, and uh, you might be able to take advantage of that. So information gathering, another step in the process. Um, Jake, Jake Applebaum walked up to a, uh, a DPT worker, uh, one of the parking meter workers in San Francisco, and just started asking really dumb questions. Saying, hey, how do these, you know, those meters are cool. How do they work? Are they connected? Are they networks? Or, you know, how, wh what do you do? And you know, the guy basically showed him the whole process of, here's, you know, here's a device I can pull down the, the records with. And no, they're not connected to each other. Hey, you should get a job here. And uh, so, you know, a little social, engine can, social engineering can go a long way. And then crawling the internet for, for information. Again, we knew it was a McKay Guardian meter. We wanted to get information as much as we could about how the system worked. Um, so besides reading all the data sheets, we found this really cool posting uh, from the senior software designer who was creating the parking meter, um, asking a question on, uh, oh, the Sigwin mailing list. Uh, he was experimenting with CVS and said, I'm having problems with CVS. Here's my, here's my path list. Uh, and we could see all sorts of stuff in here. And I cut out a bunch of it, but I left sort of the, the, the really bad stuff. Um, he had a directory called ePurse. If you do a search for ePurse, that's the latest and greatest technology developed by McKay for doing their electronic uh, uh, monetary transactions. Um, MetTalk. Is, a, is something from McKay, if you do a web search, you'll find out that's the interface for the debug administrator access. Um, Gemplus, R right away we know they're using a Gemplus smart card. So now we can take that knowledge, take that clue, go to the Gemplus site, see what, par what cards they recommend for their customers to use for stored value parking. Um, die analysis, this wasn't necessary, this is sort of an optional thing, but we had Chris Tarnowski involved who was by far one of the best um, silicon die hackers in the world, and I'd always been looking for an excuse to work with him. So it's like, hey, can you, you know, look at these smart cards for me? And he did, and, and he went through this process of de decapping the part, removing the IC from the actual smart card. Um, so we bought, uh, um, how many did we buy? 20, 20, I think 20 smart cards um, from the store, and I walk in, I walk into the store, and, and, and I like, paying in cash uh, for these smart cards. So I went to a, a hardware store that I don't normally go to, and I walk in, and I said, I'd like to buy 20 parking cards. And the guy's like, 20 parking cards? What do you need 20 parking cards for? I'm like, oh, I'm a sales guy. You know, I use the parking meter a lot. I'm gonna distribute them to my sales team. And he's like, okay. So I gave him the money, and I got all the cards. Um, went back and sent them to Chris, and we ended up analyzing a bunch of them and realized that there's two different types of card, which was interesting. One was this early version ASIC that was hard-coded to certain functions. And then the newer version, which was pretty much indistinguishable from the exterior, um, was a microprocessor-based version, which means now these cards are programmable. Maybe there's hidden functionality in them. Maybe there's some uh, commands that aren't accessible to most users that we can take advantage of. Um, but it was, just, it was just sort of interesting. But what was also cool is that the microprocessor version was probably cheaper nowadays than using an ASIC. But having something reprogrammable, um, we could probably take advantage of that. So just some die shots, because they look cool. Um, so what we did is monitor the communication between the smart card and the parking meter. Very, very simple. I took a, a microprocessor or a smart card shim, which looks like that. The smart card pads on one side, wires going out to a socket, and then those wires are broken out to little test points that I can monitor. 
So I put the smart card in, put the shim into the meter, captured all the information with the standard um, digital oscilloscope, an Agilent scope that I happen to have. Um, and